Today's crazy story is about two borders. The border between Kenya and Tanzania, located on the east side of Africa. And then the other one is about that little piece of land in the northern part of Namibia, which is located on the west side of Namibia. These two crazy borders are actually related, which I think makes for a very intriguing story. The first of the crazy borders that we're going to look at is this one over here between Kenya in the north and Tanzania in the south. If you look at these two lines and that link between them, there's something quite interesting that happens there. That link seems to sort of neatly go around Mount Kilimanjaro. And there's something very special about Mount Kilimanjaro. Believe it or not, as a self-standing peak, Mount Kilimanjaro is actually the tallest mountain in the world. But looking at its height relative to all the other peaks, it's the fourth tallest in the world. Mount Kilimanjaro is seen as a pride of Africa. And looking at this border, one wonders if the eastern line of this border, if one had to extend that eastern line, Kilimanjaro would now be inside Kenya. This border's strange shape, neatly hugging Mount Kilimanjaro, has raised some sort of mythic beliefs that perhaps that mountain was once inside Kenya and handed over to Tanzania or something to that effect. In fact, this borderline, this crazy borderline, has nothing to do with Kilimanjaro. It actually has everything to do with this city down here, Mombasa. As it turns out, Mombasa is a natural deep water harbor. And at one stage in history, Mombasa was part of Tanzania, or Tanganyika, as it was known at that time. And while it was under the ownership of Tanganyika, it was a German colony, and hence it belonged to Germany. Now, the British wanted Kenya as a viable, self-standing country, so to speak. And to achieve that, they really did need to have a um, deep water harbor. And Tanzania, as it turns out, has two. Mombasa, and down here, the main city, Dar es Salaam, which is also on a deep water harbor. So with Tanzania having two and Kenya not having any, the British basically pleaded with the Germans, please, 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 could we have Mombasa? I mean, you guys have got two natural harbors and we've got none. And the response from the Germans was pretty much nine. But something else occurred. Now, to explain what is about to happen with regards to the border with Namibia, I want to zoom out just for a bit and take a look at the bigger picture of Southern Africa and something of interest. So Tanzania and Namibia are both German colonies at the time. But there's an interesting phenomenon that happens for about three months of the year. These waters here at the southern tip of Africa are very wild, very dangerous. And technically, actually, no ship should pass um, during a certain time of year. That would imply that German ships cannot make their way to Tanzania. Germany is literally cut off from one of its colonies for about three, perhaps four months of the year. Now, given that situation, the Germans looked at how desperately the British wanted Mombasa and looked at Namibia's location and came up with a harebrained scheme. So at this stage, I now want to introduce this guy here, Leo von Caprivi. This was the general overlooking the colonial issues for, on behalf of Germany during that time period. Leo came up with a very intriguing idea. And it goes like this. He wanted to link Namibia across Africa all the way through to Tanzania. Knowing that the British had a whole series of colonies in the way and that the British so desperately wanted Mombasa, he decided to negotiate for this little strip to be allotted to Namibia. Now, this is how the idea would work out. This strip leads all the way to over here at this point. This point is basically the beginning of the headwaters of the Great Zambezi River. The idea would go like this. German uh, ships would come all the way down to Volfus Bay in Namibia. This is another deep water harbor. The ships would offload their goods onto a truck and the goods would be trucked all the way through that little strip right to this specific point. At this point, 
the goods would then be offloaded and reloaded onto a boat. That boat would then sail the Zambezi River. Now the idea would be that this boat would actually sail all the way around the top part of, Z of Zimbabwe and make its way through into, um, well, Tanzania, I guess. Well, with that idea in mind, what it required was for the British to hand over a piece of land to Germany, this specific strip. When Leo von Caprivi put his proposal for that strip forward to the British, I think at that stage the British probably looked at it and tried to see his reasoning and logic, probably looked at each other and thought, yeah, this guy is probably the biggest idiot or an absolute mastermind. But their major concern was Mombasa, and they probably asked, we get Mombasa, right? We give you this strip, and we get Mombasa, right? To which the Germans most likely responded, yeah. To which the English went, show us where to sign, please. So there you have it. The Germans got the little strip of land, which was named the Caprivi Strip, and in exchange, the British got that deep water harbour in Mombasa. Except there were a few flaws in Germany's idea with regards to linking West Africa to East Africa via the Caprivi Strip. There are basically four fundamental flaws. The first major flaw is that the Zambezi River actually starts off being very shallow waters. These are crocodile infested waters that one can only really navigate using a canoe. Secondly, those waters then lead into some very wild rapids, which again, you can't really navigate using a boat. And then those waters lead over the Victoria waterfalls. So one wonders, what were they thinking of how to navigate those waters? Lastly, the Zambezi River runs into Mozambique, which is a Portuguese colony. Makes one wonder exactly how they were going to secure the link to Tanzania. So what was Vaughan Caprivi thinking when he put forward his proposal to the British for the Caprivi Strip? Perhaps dre dredge the whole of the Zambezi River, that way um, boats could actually sail through it. Um, perhaps create a lock system um, that would circumnavigate the uh, Victoria waterfalls. They have something similar right now for the Niagara waterfalls in, in Canada and the US. Perhaps strike a deal with the Portuguese that a portion of what is today northern Mozambique would be part of Tanzania, or perhaps have some sort of right of way to get to the Zambezi River. We're not quite sure what Von Caprivi was thinking, but in today's world it doesn't really matter anymore because the large scale um, ships that move cargo in and around the world, those freighters can handle um, circumnavigating the southern tip of Africa, even during those three months of wild waters, so to speak. Nonetheless, today we have a situation where we have the Caprivi Strip in the northern part of Namibia, and um, Kenya has Mombasa as a natural harbor and it's their main harbor city, and that's just the world we live in. But now you know how those borders came about. Thank you very much for watching.